Yeah, we had a bit of a heat wave. Um, it was it wasn't really much hotter than it was, but the wind stops, and when the wind stops, you get this heat bubble that forms um, over Greece. So we had a we had about a week where it was just crazy, crazy, crazy hot, and then the wind came back, and uh, and it was bearable again. Oh, good. What's, uh, what's it like where you are? I suppose you haven't even paid any attention. You've been head inside cabinets and uh, holding <laughs> things together and stuff, right? Yeah, we so the approach we've taken with this whole season, as you know, with our chats back and forth, has been to basically do a proof of concept and and add to as you go because that's kind of my style is I want to experience it in real time and then adapt accordingly. And so the multi plus, yeah. I, I want to start with that if you're okay with that. Oh my <laughs> yeah, go heavens. Ahead. Why did that become such a big monster in my mind? It wasn't even that hard. And it wasn't. I mean, yeah, it's a couple of big cables and a couple of small cables and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just, I'm very familiar with DC inverters like the one that I've used where it's just two cables, turn on a right. switch and you go. This one was like, yeah. And everything I was reading, there were some that caught fire. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is not OK to to be a hobbyist such as myself and dabble with. I need an electrician. And then it was like, well, we're already underway. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So just delay, delay, delay. <clears throat> when I finally got in there and did it, now we can use a microwave. Now we can use our washing machine like it's okay so thank you for all of your support no problem. have you got the safety stuff inside have you got a circuit breaker that'll trip if uh, if you electrocute yourself yes yes actually i've done a uh, just 125 amps because i wanted to start really really small and and work my way up from there but i i did see your uh, comments about getting a more robust safety mechanism in place and system in place that's that's on the plan for season two as you know we're getting ready to haul out and go back to work okay uh kansas city calls we're not quite all in like the mckay's it's it's kind of a let's see how this works for us first yeah but the main thing is leslie's happy right now right oh yes yeah. she is so much happier oh my goodness it was hilarious to see her expression change when she knew she could have an oven. <laughs> I thought, yeah. I don't even want see, before, an oven. before the MultiPlus, you were actually just boat camping, and now you're living on a boat. Correct. And, I mean, we had, we had our induction stove was working fine, so we were able to cook, like, breakfasty foods or whatever, and... You know, anything that a hot plate could do, we could do. Um, yeah. But, you know, we had running water because the 12 volt, that's easy enough to hook up. Um, and so There's plumbing is fine. We could boil water. but And we even ran our coffee maker, which she's from Seattle, if you recall. And so coffee is yeah. a massive commodity there. And it's an entire social structure in Seattle. And so she still has yeah. that, you know, impact on her. So she needs coffee and she okay. had her coffee. So she was okay, but you could tell she was increasingly needing some more of these modern accoutrements that frankly I could have done without forever and been fine. Yeah. Uh, but are you in your showers hot at least? No, not yet. No, I was waiting on the multi plus to be able to hook up the hot water heater. And okay. so right now it's been more like sponge off or go into the marina, um, okay. which ultimately we want to not do a lot of marinas. Yeah. Like uh, the Great Loop is very different than your experience in that it's more protected waterways. It's right. narrower. It's long. I think it's longer. Um, and so the marinas aren't terribly expensive. You're talking like... Under two dollars per foot, um, and wow. so it's That's not, bargain, yeah. not yeah, it's not prohibitively expensive. But then again, they don't come with 
like all the beautiful scenario that you guys have in the marinas there it's more like okay yeah, you've got a you got a shower but it's not nice you know and you've got a little shopping area okay. and you can tie off your boat kind of a thing so i'm actually going to find okay. a different spot because i like being up here i wanted to showcase our solar oh, is very yeah our solar is very um season one <laughs> Um, it is very temporarily laid out because I was hoping for a, a no weld, um, stainless steel arch, but a longer okay. one that's like a canopy. And I found very quickly while still on the hard, uh, down in Beaufort, that that is just not going to be realistic. And did so you, then it was did you look okay. at stuff called 8020 it's that uh extruded aluminium that is basically like uh giant lego sets that you can bolt things together are you thinking like this no there's a specific stuff a specific uh, type of uh material called 8020 and it's oh. it's slotted and you slide things in and out of the slots that was my backup plan if i couldn't find a stainless welder and I almost ordered it, and then I found a stainless welder. But I'm, I'm almost a little bit sad that I didn't go with that because it's such good stuff, such versatile stuff, and you can find so many different um, sizes and shapes and attachments and all of that. You know what? Now that you describe it, I remember seeing there was a boat in the boatyard that had a very similar to that description um, – solar arch and so i thought about it for a moment like hey yeah. maybe that's something i should use so you think that's a very viable option then yeah absolutely um i saw a, another boat that built their solar arch a really big solar arch out of it and it looked brilliant and because it's diy and bolt together you can do pretty much anything you like and you know you make it too long you cut a piece off and it carries on yeah, uh, in the states they call it eighty twenty. I think uh, it's also called T slot aluminium. Uh, Interesting extruded aluminium. I think that's going to be uh, uh, more likely, likely to go towards. in the camper van world. If you look in the camper van world, the guys use that for um, for roof racks all the time. Interesting. I will do a lot more research on that because honestly, the welding when I priced it out. Patrick, the guy wanted twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> okay. I'm like, you're out of your yeah. god-given mind. I paid um, five thousand for my boat. <laughs> so, yeah, mine was mine was five thousand um, dollars, and I'm not happy with it. Um, you got the measurement slightly off, so instead of having a straight solar arch, mine is slightly curved. So mm -hmm. I've had to put spaces in for the panels and. Uh, Next time I'll DIY it. It's just I had to get going and I had to get going fast. Yes, that's, you know what, I understand that. And that's something I think we can kind of talk about for this episode is those moments when you realize I have to do something and I have to do it now. Um, how do you, since you're the, I look at you as the, the godfather of this whole um, movement, and excuse me while I get myself very comfortable because <laughs> I'm wanting to showcase some of the my why for all this. And that is the just the beauty of chilling out, watching this. I like take a moment real quick. Cool. Just take one little moment with me and appreciate. That is very, very cool. My goodness. I mean, I'm sitting here admiring Patrick's backgrounds for years now. Because I think I started following your channel like last year, and I was like, "God, that looks incredible! I want I that yeah. so bad, so bad!" And now I have only about four or five more days to enjoy Weird. it myself. So enjoy it, I shall. But talk to us a little bit about your so experience. You're a lot faster than most. I've been uh, speaking to another two guys that have been building boats. Um, One's converting an aluminium catamaran, and the other one's converting a 46-foot um, motor cat. Ooh. And I've been speaking to them for years, and uh -huh. uh, 
they're not on the water yet. I think they're close. Well, I think the yeah. one uh, with the aluminium cut is close. To, the giant muddy yacht takes a lot more time and money to put together, so that's going to take a lot Absolutely. longer. But uh, you were really quick. I mean, it feels like it was just the other day. You said, what do you think of this catamaran? I'm thinking of buying it. And, uh, <laughs> and now you're on the water flirting. Yes. Well, I, when I make up my mind to do something, I'm, I'm pretty quick to do it. And I don't mind taking the approach of, and I've got a wife who loves me just enough to tolerate my quirks. Um, and so it was, you know what, I can deal with some slowness on the inside. It's not completely finished on the inside, you know, but some of that I've seen you do like where, Okay, we can work on some of the cabin comforts as we go. But really, when you boil my boat down, yeah. can it float was question number one. Can I propel it? Question number two, in the way that I want, you know, like with the solar and the electric outboards. And then question three is, can I navigate safely and avoid catastrophe? <laughs> you know, outside of that, let's go see if this thing actually works. And so I've taken, I've been able to go quickly because I've taken that route of bare bones, as you said, camping on the water. And from there, let's step up the quality of life as we go. And right. had my wife fine with that concept because she loves me so much. I'm spoiled in that way. Patrick, talk to me about, um, when you have had to make the decision, hey, you know what, we're going, even though this isn't quite up to what I will get it to. So what's yeah, one of well, the I mean, we, <laughs> we We started right from the beginning like that. So our boat wasn't ready uh, when we put it on the water. Um, you know, we've still got the mast and it's technically a sailboat. And I didn't know if I would be able to have a motorboat. I didn't know I'd be able to do much more than get in and out of marinas and in and out of uh, anchorages and that. But in the end, um, the so in Europe, I'm sure it's the same in the States, or maybe not, everything shuts down for the whole of August. There's nothing that goes on. You can't get labor in August. And our rigging guy replaced the rigging on our boat and then realized that the boom wouldn't clear the solar panels. Oh, no. And... Uh, and said, but he'll be back in September. You can fix it then. And we're sitting in a boatyard late July, and it is scorchingly hot on the boatyard. I mean, boatyards are much hotter than being on the water. Oh, and yeah. we didn't have working sails. Uh, there was no way we could put a sail up. So we just got on the boat and uh, put it in the water and said, look, we know it will float. We know the motors work a little bit. Let's book the closest marina we can find. And that was about 12 or 13 miles away. And let's just go there, and then we'll figure it out from there. And uh, we got that far. We got to the marina. And then we had somebody look at our foresail, and they replaced the, the way the foresail attaches to the, to the, what do we call it, to the, to the forestay. Uh -huh. And we had kind of a foresail, but we couldn't really use it. But we thought, okay, well, at least in an emergency, we might have a backup. It might wear itself through on one of the solar panels, but we were able to get, get home, hopefully. Right, uh, and we stayed in that marina for a month, and we did a couple of test motors in and out. And uh, the last thing we were waiting for, which you probably don't need on an inland waterway, is an EPIRV. Um, it's the emergency locator beacon, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't want to go into open water without it because you know, if the worst happens, we lose all our electrics and that we can't talk to anyone, we can't do anything. Um, yeah. at least we can press a button on the EPIRV and, and have people rescue us. And then the EPIRB was delayed by months. And they said, oh, it'll come, it'll oh, come no. next month or a month after. And the marina, that one was 900 euros a month, so probably about $1,100 a month. And we said, let's Ooh. give it a go. We're going to stay close to the coast. We'll just motor. And we, we just left on a whim. We're in an anchorage. We're going to stay in a, a nice close anchorage to the marina where the EPIRB was going. And we just said, okay, well, let's go north. And we got on the boat and we did 22 miles a day and the batteries were still full when we got there. And we looked at each other and it's, this actually works. We actually don't really yeah, need so really? <laughs> We can get around without them. And, uh, and then we just didn't stop. So we went all the way up the west coast of uh, Croatia into Italy, 
uh, with love Lots it. Else. And uh, that season was incredible. I, I mean, I was just in love with the whole concept <laughs> that season. Yeah. So, I mean, it is, you kind of explore and you push the limits a little bit. And when the limits is, you know, you think the limits here and it's actually way over there. You're like, okay, well, let's just, let's just take it easy and, uh, and do it. Yeah. There. Okay. So what, remind me, what is the longest journey that you have made on solar, not just solar, but like electricity alone, no sales? Yeah. Uh, the, journey from Italy to Greece was 48 miles and there was no wind zero wind and that so was this was, season right that was really, yeah. was that the season that was yeah the last uh, probably about two or three videos ago uh, yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. That, was and in awesome. fact, that was last year October so that wasn't even June July when uh, when the sun is way up above you and you've got all this excess energy that was late late in the season and, and in fact, also in October, we did, the, yeah, we did the 76 miles from Croatia to Italy. And we put up a sail, but there was, again, virtually no wind. We put up the foresail. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that one was about 98% uh, on electricity. Oh, wow. 78 miles on 98% yeah. electricity. Wow. So yeah. for yeah, us so was far... Yeah, we have done um, our longest day was 24 miles. And, you know, on that day, I was really emphasizing for most of the day, just use the solar alone. Don't use a drop of the battery. Like keep keep the battery discharge at mm -hmm. positive, like positive two. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there yeah. just ginger the whole way. And... Yeah. In retrospect, yeah. that was really silly because I got into our uh, marina and I was at, good Lord, was I had 80% battery. It was like, why am I sitting here on all this yeah. battery? And we only use like 10 to 15% yeah. of the battery overnight. And then it's yeah. fully recharged by like 10 a.m. You're ready to go. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of how we operate as well. And I, I thought about it for a while. And the only time that you can really use the battery to give you a bit of extra speed is very early in the morning. Yeah. Um, because the difference, I mean, you know, you've been testing it for a while now. The difference between 1,000 watts on each motor and 1,500 watts on each motor is very minimal. It's, minimal. You know, it's very minimal. It's not going to really get you there an hour or two earlier. Um, right. In the morning, though, when there's no sun, like if you leave, and I've done a few uh, sunrise uh, departures, and if you leave then and you're going at 200 watts a motor and you're up it to 300 watts a motor or 400 watts a motor, that makes a speed difference. But from 11 o'clock onwards, you're not really improving your speed. Thank you for watching this conversation about solar sailing. In upcoming episodes, the crews of Sailing Electra and Soul Seeker continue sharing practical experiences, tips for success, and their inspiration for pursuing what once seemed impossible. Please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe to both channels and hit the alert button so you don't miss a thing.